Um, so what I wanted to focus on this morning is a practice specifically to settle your nervous system, a practice specifically to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the part of your nervous system that controls your rest and digest response, which is what is stimulated when we feel safe and not in a place of fear and anxiety. So we're going to be using different techniques to do that this morning. But I wanted to start out with a little story of Piglet and Pooh, which I'm pretty sure was not written by A.A. A. Milne, but someone co-opted the characters. But it feels to me somewhat relevant and perhaps helpful. So here we go. Piglet, said Pooh. Yes, said Piglet. I'm scared said Pooh. For a moment there was silence. Would you like to talk about it? asked Piglet, when Pooh didn't appear to be saying anything further. I'm just so scared, blurted out Pooh. So anxious, because I don't feel like things are getting any better. If anything, I feel like things might be getting worse. People are angry because they're so scared and they're turning on one another and there seems to be no clear plan out of here. And I worry about my friends and the people I love and I wish so much that I could give them all a hug and oh Piglet, I am so scared and I cannot tell you how much I wish it wasn't so. Piglet was thoughtful as he looked out at the blue of the skies, peeping between the branches of the trees in the hundred acre wood and listened to his friend. I'm here, he said simply. I hear you, Pooh, and I'm here. For a moment, Pooh was perplexed. But aren't you going to tell me not to be so silly, that I should stop getting myself into a state and pull myself together and that it's hard for everyone right now? No, said Piglet quite decisively. No, I am very much not going to say any of those things. I can't change the world right now, continued Piglet, and I'm not going to patronize you with platitudes about how everything will be okay, because I don't know that. What I can do, though, Pooh, is that I can make sure that you know that I am here and that I will always be here to listen and to support you and for you to know that you are heard. I can't make those anxious feelings go away, not really, but I can promise you that all the time I have breath left in my body, you won't ever need to feel those anxious feelings alone. And it was a strange thing because even as Piglet said that, Pooh could feel some of those anxious feelings start to loosen their grip on him and could feel one or two of them start to slither away into the forest cowed by his friend who sat there stolidly next to him. Pooh thought he had never been more grateful to have Piglet in his life. So whether you have a Piglet in your life or you are Piglet for yourself, let's take this time together to listen to ourselves to create space for whatever it is we're feeling. And to cultivate some peace right here, right now, which is all we have control over. So please lengthen through your spine and close your eyes. And bring your awareness to your breathing. Just sit for a moment and listen to yourself, however you are feeling right now, physically, emotionally, mentally. And as you take a few deeper breaths, begin to invite space, a space inside of you a physical space that occurs as your lungs expand and press your rib cage to
to the sides, forward and back. And in that physical space, perhaps a metaphorical space to accommodate whatever you might be feeling. When our feelings become so big that they feel claustrophobic and that there's no room for anything else, making some space in our bodies to hold and accommodate those feelings can be helpful. And so as you breathe, breathe really intentionally, front to back, wide, side to side, broad, top to bottom, full, increasing the space in your chest, in your belly, in your whole thoracic cavity. And as you continue to take some fuller, deeper breaths, begin to also lengthen your exhalation. When we are in fight or flight or freeze, we take deeper inhalations to oxygenate the muscles, to prepare them to run, to flee, to fight. But when we're in rest or digest, the exhalations are longer, letting the body and the brain know that there is nothing that needs to be fleed from feared deeply at this moment, and the body and the nervous system can relax. And so we can harness this physiological response to the way we breathe and cultivate longer exhalations to let the body and the brain know that they can relax a little bit. So just lengthen a little your exhalations. And if possible, do the breathing through your nose. Sit however you're comfortable sitting. And then let's get even more intentional about how we're breathing. We're going to do a silent count, as though there was a metronome inside of you, counting six beats for the inhalation, but eight beats for the exhalation. So you're really clearly making it longer. So it would be something like this in your own head. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so like that, but at your own pace, at your own count, so that the breathing rhythm is comfortable for you and you're not feeling like there's not enough breath or you're running out of breath because that will just set you back into fight or flight. So just focusing on that long, slow, soothing exhalation, something that any of us can do at any time that we're feeling stressed. And take three more breaths like this. And if it feels like you could go even longer with your exhalation, do six count inhale and 10 count exhale. Just inviting even longer exhalations. And if that doesn't feel comfortable, then just six, eight. One is not better than the other, they're just different. Take one last long, slow breath. And then let your breath resume its natural rhythm. And check in and listen again to yourself with an attention, a presence. And notice if that breathing practice shifted anything for you. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. And this is just to gather information, just to know, just to pay attention.
While yoga has so many benefits, the highest purpose of the practice, the ancient practice, is to create connection, to connect the body, the mind, the heart, the breath, to connect us to the rest of life, to one another, to the earth herself. We're going to chant to start our practice. We're going to chant the sound OM three times, our invocation three times, and another OM. Chanting is another practice that settles the nervous system because it invites a long exhalation. So take a deep, slow breath in, a long, slow breath out. Another breath in, and we'll start. Sitting for just a moment in the stillness with the eyes closed, I invite you to make a dedication of your practice, to dedicate your breath, your energy, your movements to wherever you feel it is most needed, to a person, to a place, to a group, to the earth herself, maybe just to yourself. I'm going to start in child's pose. So make your way into child's pose, sitting back on your heels, forehead to the floor. If your forehead doesn't reach the floor, you can put your blanket or a block underneath. Your arms can be in whatever position feels most comfortable. You can make a little pillow of your hands for your head. You can stretch your arms out in front. You can stretch your arms back behind you by your feet. Once you're settled, bring awareness back to your breathing. In yoga, we attempt to breathe through the nose, both the inhale and the exhale. If 
focus your breath into the back of your lungs and the back rib cage, the rib cage in the back, the back part of your rib cage. And as you breathe in, imagine your back body expanding up towards the ceiling a little bit and broadening left and right. And if it's not comfortable for you to sit your hips all the way back to your heels, you can keep your hips as elevated as you need to. Let me just take a few deep breaths into the back body. In yoga, we talk about the front body as being the way in which we relate to ourselves as individuals, the personal, and the back body as being the way in which we connect more to the community, the communal, the universal, the bigger whole that we're all part of. So by focusing the breath into the back body, we take our awareness out of just what we each need, which is important, but also takes into consideration and account the greater whole that we're all part of. So we'll take one more breath fully into your back body. And then bring yourself up to all fours to hands and knees. Place your hands directly under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Press the whole hand down firmly into the mat. And we'll start with some cat-cow breaths, focusing on long exhalations and expanding the back body. So as you exhale, press your spine to the sky. Let the head release down. And then as you inhale, lift your head and look forward. And then again, exhale and round the spine up towards the ceiling, emptying yourself out, creating expansion and space. Inhale again, arch the back, lift the head, look forward, and exhale and round. Now, if your knees are uncomfortable, you can always put a blanket under your knees. And then continue at your own pace. So you find your rhythm of breathing, your rhythm of movement, There isn't a right or a wrong. There's more or less degrees of attention and awareness to cultivate. So just move at your own pace, paying attention to yourself, to what you feel, what you're experiencing, and the ways in which maybe you might be able to hear yourself, to listen to yourself, and maybe through that deeper listening to yourself, listen to others to be there for others in their distress and their challenges. One more breath, just like this. And after you finish that last breath, come to a neutral back and stretch your right leg back, keep the toes on the floor. Right leg back, toes on the floor and press out through your right heel. So just organize yourself on your mat so you've got plenty of space. If you're wearing socks, you might do better taking them off so your foot doesn't slip. Whatever is comfortable and working for you. So you should feel some stretch through the back of the right leg. Keep the head in line with the spine. And then place the left hand on the left hip and twist the upper body to your left. Roll the left shoulder back. The head back, the ears back. The right leg is still straight and lifting. Lift the low belly a little bit up and stretch the left arm to the ceiling. If that works for your shoulder, if it doesn't keep the hand on the hip. And then sweep the left hand underneath your right and come down onto your left shoulder, the left side of your head. And inhale, lift yourself up and twist open to the left again. So left arm to the sky, upper body to your left. And again, exhale, left arm underneath, come down onto the shoulder almost as though you're putting your ear to the ground, metaphorically. Inhale, lift yourself back up, listening, as Piglet listened to Pooh. Exhale again, arm underneath, and then you're gonna stay here, pause here. Walk the right, uh, left hand a little further to the right, and then with your right hand pressing into the floor, press from your right elbow to your right shoulder back, so your right shoulder moves more into your back body. Take a deep breath into your back body. 
And then bring yourself back to all fours, hands and knees. Stretch the left leg back, toes on the floor. Press out through the heel. Connect to your breath. Breathe into the back body as much as into the front body. Right hand to the right hip, twist to the right. Lift the right arm to the ceiling. Lean the head back, the ears back. And exhale, sweep the right arm underneath the left. Come down onto the right shoulder, right side of the head. Inhale, bring yourself up. Open, twist to the right. Exhale, sweep under. Come down onto the shoulder, side of the head. Inhale, lift up and twist open. Exhale, arm underneath and pause here. And deepen a little bit. So right arm a little bit more out to the right. Left shoulder back. Back leg lifting, belly muscles strong. Another breath. Come back up to hands and knees. Three more cat-cow breaths. Inhaling, lift the head, look forward. Exhale, back body full and open, round to the sky, drop your head. Inhale, lift the head, look forward and arch. Exhale, and round. Last time. And come to a neutral back. Shift your knees back about six inches. Keep your toes curled under. And moving from your back body, lift up to downward facing dog. So back body full, lift the knees, lift the hips. And then pedal your feet left and right and move how you need and like to move. Move with your breath. Attention turned to yourself, to releasing your nervous system. Deep, full breaths. If you're familiar with ujjayi pranayama, you can practice that. Otherwise, regular breath through your nose, mindful, conscious. Stretch your legs straight and still. And careful of what's behind you, lift your right leg up in the air. And then step your right foot forward to a lunge. And if your foot didn't make it up to your hand, give your foot a hand. And lift to fingertips. And up on your fingertips, extend your spine forward. Bring your right hand again to your right hip. Twist the torso to your right. Move the right shoulder back in space. Fire up the muscles of your left leg and then stretch your right arm to the ceiling. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bring your right hand down to the floor. So I'm going to give you a few options. Choose the option that works best for you. Option one, keep your hands on the floor. Option two, hands on your right knee. Option three, arms to the sky. Left heel straight back. Or if you need a little bit of extra balance, spin the heel to the floor. Take a breath in whichever option you have chosen. And then exhale, both hands back down to the floor. Step forward with your left foot. Straighten your legs. Now, if your hands don't reach the floor, place them on your shins or on blocks. But it's better for your back not to let the back hang with the back unsupported. So bear some weight in your hands, wherever they may be. She's good, she's good. I got her. Inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Exhale and fold and bow in. So there's some weight in your hands. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale and fold in. 
One more breath. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, and fold. And then inhale, rise. Come all the way up to stand. Reach your arms to the sky. Stretch up. Reach up. And exhale your hands into your heart. Inhale, reach your arms forward and up. And exhale, bend forward again. Hands coming to some support. Floor, shins, blocks, thighs. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold in. Bend the knees, place the hands on the mat, step both feet back, down face dog. Spread your fingers wide. And from your heart, press down through your arms. Karen, lift the hips high, yeah. And into the floor. Jill, bring your hands to the floor. So dog, yeah, dog pose, yeah. Take a breath in. Lift the left leg up, careful. There may be a human behind you. There may be something else. Step the left foot forward, lunge. And then whichever you did on the first side, do on the second side. So either hands on the floor, hands to the knees, hands to the sky. One is not better than the other. They are just different. Because the purpose of the practice is not to do the most advanced form of the pose. The most advanced form of the pose is the one that brings you into deepest connection. Take another breath in. And exhale, hands back down to the floor. Step forward with your right foot. Straighten your legs. Support yourself. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold and bow in. And inhale, rise all the way up. Reach your arms to the sky. Stretch up. And exhale your hands into your heart. Good. Very good. So we're going to turn sideways on the mat, facing the long edge of the mat. You can either face to the river or you can face into the room if you want to see me. Take a wide stance. So either way, if you want to see me, face into the room. If you want to see the river, face to the river. We're a good view either way. Okay, just joking, 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 okay. <laughs> turn the right foot out 90 degrees. And everyone go a little bit longer. So the length of your stance is about the length of one of your legs. So you can take a measure there. Yeah, so short legs, short stance, long legs, long stance, etc. Inhale, open the arms to the sides, breathe in. Exhale, Virabhadrasana two, second warrior, bend your right knee to a square, the right knee. Yeah. Yeah. And then just settle here and breathe. So your spine is vertical. And the right knee is pressing to the right, right in line with their second toe. So look down at your right, right second toe, the second toe of your right foot, and point your kneecap straight over there. Three deep breaths. And then you can stop looking at your knee and just gaze out over your right fingertips. Take one more breath in. Focus on a long exhalation. And then reach your left hand to your left thigh, back behind you, your right arm up over by your ear, palm facing back towards your left leg. And take a little side bend backwards towards your left leg. Open your throat so your head's not pulling forward. Yeah. Inhale back to warrior two, arms to the side. Then bend the right forearm to the right thigh. So you've got a little shelf. And the left arm straight up to the ceiling. And then breathe. Can you hear your breath? Deep, full breaths. One more breath. Okay, come up, straighten your legs. Keep your right foot turned out, but straighten your legs for triangle pose. Extend from the core of your pelvis, so the very middle of your body, down through your legs, up through your spine, out through your arms. So make everything as long as it will go. And then reach the right hand down to the shin and the left arm straight up. Now, if your right hand goes to the floor, Take your right hand to the floor. For most of us, it will be on the shin. The right leg will stay straight. 
and then lean yourself back a little bit. Remember your back body. If the shoulder is being bothered, keep the left hand on the hip. Lean back a little bit. Lean the head back a little bit. And just remember that you are part of a vast community of beings on this planet, that you are part of something big, and that you have something to offer that vaster, bigger community that we're all part of. Take one more breath in. And as you exhale, bring yourself all the way up. Release your arms. Parallel your feet. So we're going to do that same to the second side, but if you want to step your feet in and give your legs a rest, go ahead. If your legs feel like, oh, I can keep going, then you can leave them wide. And then step back out if you stepped in. And turn your left foot 90 degrees out. Yeah. So again, wide enough so it's about the length of a leg, your personal leg. Open the arms to the sides, breathe in. And then letting go with an exhalation, bend the left knee. And there's just this settling into yourself. And you can think about the thigh bone in your left leg, your left thigh bone, getting heavy and sinking towards the back side of the leg, as though the bone were sinking through the muscle tissue into the hamstrings. So the bone is getting heavier you're not actually going to feel your bone move, but feel, think about it, settling. And that settles the psoas muscle, which is part of our fight or flight response. So by letting that bone settle, there's a deep release. And we send another message to the nervous system, from, to the brain, I'm OK. When swept to warrior, lean back, back, right hand to the right thigh. The left knee stays bent. And if it gets tired, you can always straighten the leg and let it release and then bend it back again. And Parshvakonasana, left forearm to the thigh, right arm to the sky. Left knee pressing to the left. And while there's a, a desire kind of to pull the head forward, see if you can keep the head back in line with the spine. The shoulder back over the other shoulder. Take one more breath. Inhale, come all the way up, straighten the legs. So keep your left foot out. We've got one more pose to do. Turn the left foot so it's 90 degrees out, dead ahead, and then triangle pose. Keeping the legs straight, right hand to the shin or the floor. To the right, yeah. And then it's the same thing with the head, left to the left, sorry, to the left. Lean your head back a little bit. Lean your chest back a little bit. And turn your chest more open to the ceiling. Yeah, nice, Karen. Deep breath in. Slow breath out. Inhale, push down into your legs. Come all the way up. Release your arms. Parallel your feet. And step your feet back together. And you can turn back to face the front of the room. Land solidly down into your feet. Step to the top of your mat, so the front short edge. And bring your hands to your heart. Parallel your feet so they're facing straight ahead. They know where you're going, or you know where they're going. Draw your shoulder blades onto your back, shoulders back. Find that breath. And take a long exhalation. Just settling everything down. Here I am, as though you were standing in the Hundred Acre Wood, and it was blue sky day. Nothing to do, nowhere to go, just to be present with yourself, with the world around you. Inhale, reach your arms forward and up. And exhale, bend forward and down. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold in, downward facing dog. Place both hands down on the mat. Step both feet back. And anchoring your hands solidly down, come to plank pose, like the top of a push-up. You can keep the knees up, or you can drop the knees down for extra support. So either way. So like the top of a push-up. Yeah. Jill, look towards me. 
Yes. Then exhale, bend the elbows, lower all the way to the floor. You can put the knees down first, come down in any way that you can, so you're lying on your belly. Point the toes, press the shoelace side of the foot down. Engage the leg muscles, lift the head, the shoulders, and the chest up. Cobra pose, baby cobra. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, lower the head back down to the floor. Take your right arm, fold it across the front of your mat, and rest your forehead on your right hand, the back of your right hand. Step the legs closer together, and then bend the left leg up behind you. Reach back with your left hand and catch the top of the foot. Bend the leg slowly so you don't cramp your hamstring. Nice and slow. Yeah. And when you've caught hold of your foot, draw your heel towards your buttock. Left heel towards left buttock. Left heel, left butt. You should feel a stretch in the top of your thigh. Press the left knee down. Press the tailbone down. Draw the heel in any amount more. And if you find that you have stopped breathing, it's your nervous system telling you you're overdoing it. Exhale and release your left foot. Breathe into your back body, a deep breath in, a slow breath out, and then switch your hands. So rest your head on your left hand, step the knees close together again, bend up the right leg, draw the right heel towards the buttock, and breathe. Breathe into the back. One more breath. Exhale, release the leg. Please roll over onto your back. So you're lying on your back. And maybe uh, lie with your head to the back of the room and your feet to the front so that if you need to see what's going on, you'll be able to more easily. Bend the knees, bring the hands to the back of the head. Inhale, and as you exhale, lift your head, shoulders, and your chest up, looking towards the ceiling, engaging the belly muscles. And then inhale, bring the head back down. Exhale, lift head, shoulders, and chest up. And inhale down. So we're gonna continue here. You can keep your feet on the floor, or you can hover your feet one inch up off the floor, just one inch, just the tiniest little bit. And you keep going, head up as you exhale, down as you inhale. Strengthening the front of the body to better support the back of the body. Three more. And when you finish the third one, put the feet down if they're up, release your hands, and cross your right ankle over your left knee. Right ankle, left knee. Take the right hand through the legs, pull the left leg towards you, and hold the back of your left leg. You should feel a stretch in your right hip. So your right hand goes through your legs to hold the back of the left leg, and the head can rest down. And the head doesn't go down, then we put a blanket. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. OK. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Lift your head. OK. And as you breathe here, Tilt your sit bones down towards the floor. Keep them tilting down as you draw your leg in a little bit more with your arms. Right foot flexed and strong. 
two more breaths. Back of the neck long. So if you found that your head kind of tilted back, see if you can lengthen the back of your neck. Yeah, good, good, Sharon. Right, keep the right ankle crossed, but put your left foot back down on the floor and bring your hands to the back of your head. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, lift your upper body and twist it to the right. So head, shoulders, chest up, twist right. And inhale back down. Lift up and twist right. Inhale back down. A few more. And again, you can keep your left foot on the floor or you can hover it one inch, just the slightest little bit up off the floor. Mindful and present. Last one. Head down, left foot down if it's up. Release your hands and place your upper arms on the floor, elbows bent, forearms vertical by your sides. Press down into your elbows, lift both hips up off the floor. They don't have to go high, lift them any amount. And then inhale, settle both hips back down. Exhale, lift both hips up. And inhale, back down. And exhale up and hold. Maybe lift a little bit higher and then see if, though the muscles in the back of your body are contracted and working, you can soften them just a little bit. You can connect a little bit more fully to everything around you. So your right ankle is, if possible, still crossed over your left thigh. Take one more breath. And then exhale, lower everything back down. Hips down, release the left foot down. Uncross your legs, your right foot down. Drop both knees to your right and then both knees to your left like they're windshield wipers and you're just wiping away the previous pose. Come back to center and cross your left ankle over your right knee. Left arm through the legs, hold the back of the right thigh with both hands. Draw the right knee in. Good. And flex your left foot. That protects the knee joint so that you're just stretching your hip, not stretching your knee. So go with that arm through here. This one. This one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to hold this leg. So through here. <laughs> it's a bit of a spaghetti junction. Yeah, and then this knee wider. Good. And then just breathe. So breath full and steady, making space with your breath in your left hip, your jaw soft. By making a physical space, we also make a space for what we're feeling. And the story that I read you about Piglet and Pooh, Piglet keeps referring to Pooh's anxious feelings, and they are capital A, capital F, anxious feelings. So make space for whatever you're feeling. One more breath. Yeah, and release your hands. Place your left foot back on the floor. Keep the right ankle, sorry, place your right foot on the floor, left ankle crossed, hands to the back of your head. And as you exhale, lift up and twist to the left. Mm -hmm. Upper body up and twist left. So you're engaging your core. Keep your hips on the floor and then inhale back down. So you're just working your abdominal muscles on the side. So up and left. Keep the right hip down. Yeah. 
and back down and continue. Keep the elbows wide. You can hover the right foot if you want. So you're not using your elbow, you're using your core. So get, keep the elbows out of the deal. The hands are just supporting the head. Good. A few more. Good, Zena. Okay, last one. And put the head down, the feet down, bend up the forearms beside you. Step the right heel in a little bit closer to your buttock and pressing down into the right foot. Inhale, lift up both hips. The left ankle still crossed. Exhale and lower. Inhale and lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift and hold. And as you, again, create that contraction in your back body, see if you can just soften it a little bit. If there could be a fullness simultaneously with the contraction. One more breath in. And exhale, hips down, uncross the left leg, step the feet as wide apart as your mat, knees bent, and drop the knees right and left. Right and left. Good. Alrighty. Roll over onto your side, come back to all fours, hands and knees facing towards the front of the room. or facing your device if you're at home. Cat cow, inhale, arch the back. Exhale, round the spine, drop the head. Inhale again, arch. And exhale, open to the vaster community to hear one another. One more breath, inhale, lengthen. Open, exhale, spine to the sky. Neutral back, down face dog. Walk the feet and the knees back just a little bit. Lift your hips. Press yourself back and up. Inhale, plank pose. Bring the hips in line with the shoulders, so a little bit lower. Head in line with the spine. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Lie on your belly, come to the shoelace side of your foot, lift your head, your shoulders, and your chest. Exhale back to down face dog. All right, just drop your knees to the floor for a second. So for those of you who are not familiar with pigeon pose, here's what it looks like. We're going to take the leg up, we're going to bend the knee, open the hips, and then the right knee comes by the right wrist, the right foot by the left wrist and the left knee down. So we've already opened up the hips, so this is just a little further opening. Ready? Down face dog. Lift up the right leg. Bend the right knee. Turn the hips to the right, the belly to the right. Nice. And then slide the right knee towards your right wrist and the right foot towards your left wrist. Yeah, and avoid just sitting down on your right hip. Keep the right hip lifting. And then slide the left leg back, left knee down. Yes, bring the forearms down. Did you ever play Twister when you were a kid? It was preparing us for yoga later in life. Right. And then breathe. Breathe into your back body. If you want more sensation, move the right knee more to the right. If you want less sensation, tuck your right foot closer in. You can always put a block under your right hip. The left knee can be down if you want. It doesn't need to be up.
Karen, see if you can lift the right hip a little bit to keep your pelvis square. Yeah. And then, is it okay if I touch you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then just lengthen here. Yeah. Jill, see if you can slide your left leg further back. Yeah, but your right leg stays where, where it is. Bring your right foot more to the left. The foot, the foot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, wait, the, that white bit there. Yeah. Yes. More to the left? Yes, towards the windows. Okay. You're doing just fine. Take another breath. And we're going to lift back to down face dog. So place your hands, lift up, and press back. So lift your hips up, press your hands down, spread your fingers wide. Yes. Good. Lift your left leg up in the air. Bend the knee. Turn your belly to the left. Look under your left arm. Yeah, no, you're doing right. You're doing right. And then slide the left knee forward towards your left wrist and your left foot across. That's it. Put your forearms here. Yes. And slide your right knee. Don't move your left. Just slide your right knee further back. Back, back. Yes, and down. Back and down. There you go. And then do some breathing. Good. And settle into your breath. Breathe into your back body. Deep breath in, long, slow breath out. And see if you can just soften a little bit, soften whatever anxiety, whatever stress is there in you, just to soften it, not to eradicate it, not to push it down, not to throw it out, not to say it's bad and wrong, but just to give yourself a little bit of space, a little bit of breath, a little bit of self-compassion and acceptance. Just a little bit. Take one more breath. Down face dog. Place the hands. Move blocks out of the way. Press yourself up and back. Good. Pedal out your feet. Pedal out your back. Lifting your head, look forward. Walk your feet up to your hands. Inhale, lengthen your spine forward. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, lengthen. Look forward. Exhale, fold. And inhale, rise all the way up. Reach your arms forward up to the ceiling. Stretch fully, and exhale, hands into your heart. We're going to take a standing balance pose, Natarajasana. So looks like this. You can hold on to a wall, a post, a windowsill, and then we lean forward and kick the foot back. So that's where we're going. If you want to move to, you can move off your mat and to a support if you want to support. And then settle from your pelvis down through your legs into your feet, into your breath. Standing on your right leg first, make it firm and strong and solid like a tree trunk. Bring your right hand to your hip, or with your right hand, hold on to whatever you're going to hold on to. Shift the weight into the right leg. Bend the left foot up behind you. Catch the top of the foot. If you're not holding on with the right arm, extend it forward. If you are, then keep it where it needs to be to support you. Take a breath in. Bruce, just take your time. And then as you exhale, kick the left foot back behind you and hinge at the hip crease. Doesn't have to be far, can just be a little bit forward. 
and breathe. And then reach yourself a little bit more. Inhale, come all the way up. And release your foot. So if you're holding on, turn around because you'll need your left hand to hold your support. Unless you're facing your support, then you're good. All right, so either left hand to hold or left hand to the hip. Left leg strong and steady. Push from the core of your pelvis down through your left foot into the floor. And then slowly bend the right leg up behind you and catch the foot. Right hand to the right foot. And then take a breath. If it's available, extend the left arm forward. Otherwise, keep it where it's supporting you. And then begin the action of the pose. Kick the right foot back. Lift the right arm up. Lean at the hip crease forward. Draw your heart forward. Two deep breaths. And then inhale, come all the way up. Nice. Exhale and release. First side again. Settle into your legs. You know where you're going now. So here is the invitation. As you come to the pose again for the second time and you lift your leg, draw your heart forward as an offering, as a way of dedicating what you're doing, that we have this incredible gift of being in a safe, quiet space, in a safe, quiet place for this hour, and offer that to people who don't have that gift. A little bit of something, a prayer, a dedication. So right leg standing, right hand holding, or right hand to the hip. Bend the left leg up behind, catch the foot. Maybe extend the right arm forward. And then lead with your heart. So lean forward, but because you're pulling your heart forward, kick the foot, the left foot back and up behind you. Take your time. Take a few breaths. Deep breath in. Slow breath out. Deep breath in. And release. Beautiful, everyone. Release the left foot. Shift the weight. Turn around if you need to turn around. Left hand to your hip. <clears throat> Get steady in the left leg, left foot. And slowly bend up the right leg behind you. Catch the foot. Maybe extend the left arm. Lead with your heart as you lean forward. Kick the foot back and up. And breathe. Another breath. And release. Foot down. Arms down. Come back to your space. If you moved away from it, bring your hands to your heart. Close your eyes for a moment. Take three deep breaths. Long exhalations. Opening the eyes, reach the arms forward up to the ceiling. Exhale, bend forward and down. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold in. Step both feet back, downward facing dog. Anchor the hands solidly into the mat. Child's pose, bend the knees. Set all the hips down. Settle the head. Breathe up into your back body, expanding and opening. Good. 
Come up to all fours, hands and knees. Step your right hand in front of your left like there are two cars in the same lane. Right hand in front of the left. Then pull both hips back and down to the right. Keep the right arm straight. Both hips back and down to the right. So right hand in front of the left. Breathe into the right side. You feel it? Inhale, bring yourself back up. Place the right hand, left hand in front of the right, but over by the right. Yeah. yeah. And then shift the hips back into your left. <clears throat> Keep the left arm straight, the left hip reaching back to the left. The right elbow can bend. Inhale, back up to center. We're going to come to lying down on the back. When, as you come down, we're going to be staying down now. We're going to be you know, moving towards Shavasana, but not yet. Have a block and a strap where you can reach it. If you know you need a blanket under your head for a pillow, for a lift, please put a blanket under your head. You know you need a blanket under your head if your head will not lay flat and your chin tips up. So just come down to your back. Knees bent, feet on the floor. Let your back settle into the floor. Bend your right knee into your chest. Place the strap around the ball of your right foot and extend your right leg to the ceiling. And as the right leg goes up, you can either keep your left knee bent, which makes the pose a little bit more accessible, or you can stretch the left leg out if you want a deeper stretch, but maybe you're good with the leg bent. See if you can bring your shoulders off the blanket so your head is supported. Yeah, yeah, and head back down, head down. And then shoulders, I know there's the kyphosis, but just shoulders down any amount. Yeah, not pushing, just being and breathing. Left leg strong and steady. Take one more breath. All right, so we're gonna twist from here. So if your left leg is bent, stretch it out straight. Take both straps in your left hand Take your right arm to the side and draw your right leg across and to your left, turning onto the pinky edge of your left foot. So you can turn onto the side of your leg, of your left leg, right leg out to the side, mindful of the other people around you and their personal space. Take another breath. Good, inhale, roll back onto your back. Take the strap off your foot, lower your foot to the floor. Deep breath in. Long, slow breath out. Left knee into your chest, strap around the left foot. Extend the left leg up. So right knee bent or right leg straight, either way. and then breathing into the back of your left leg in a way that does not create stress, but does create stretch. It's this fine line that we walk in relationship to ourselves about how to be, when to push, when not to push, how much to push. Am I creating stress, am I releasing stress? Two more breaths. If the right leg is bent, stretch it out. Take the straps in the right hand, open the left arm to the left, 
and twist, leg across and to your right. If a family member allows you to rest your foot on their, their bodies, that's okay. But if you are next to a non-family member, please be respectful. Take another breath. Inhale, bring your leg back up to center. Exhale, release. Put the strap to the side, release the leg. Take a deep breath in to your back body and out, just settling everything down. Good. Bend your knees, put your feet on the floor, find your block. Put the flat of the block underneath your sacrum. So not on your spine, but right on the flat of your sacrum. Yeah. And we're going to stay here for a few minutes, a minute or two. If you want, you can stretch your legs to the ceiling. Jill, keep your feet on the floor. Otherwise, keep the feet on the floor and focus on your breath. Those long, sweet, slow exhalations, letting the body know you are okay. Right now, just right now, you are okay. You are okay. One more breath. The legs are extended up, bend the knees, put the feet on the floor, and a few breaths here. Hear yourself. Be present with yourself. Be piglet for yourself. Lift the hips, remove the block, put it to the side. Hug your knees into your chest. Rock yourself gently from side to side. And then stretch your legs out long on the floor for a few minutes of relaxation. You made it. Relax your feet to the sides, rest your palms face up, a little bit away from your body. If they're props in your way, just move them so you're comfortable and free. Close your eyes and just breathe.
noticed your breath. And while we've been focusing on long exhalations, now focus on a longer inhalation, preparing your nervous system for the rest of the day. Deep breath in, long, slow breath out. Bless you. And gently move your fingers and your toes, waking up your body. And bend your knees and curl over to your right side. Pause there, resting. And slowly bring yourself up to sitting. Yoga provides so many tools to help us manage life to be in better relationship to ourselves, to the world around us, to what is taking place. As you step out into the rest of your day, remember that you can always use your breathing, your exhalations to help calm you down. You can breathe into your back body to help you feel more connected to the world around you. You can release the thigh bones to let your body know it doesn't need to flee. So many other ways. Please join your palms together in front of your heart. And we'll call one ohm out to the world with all our love. Take a deep breath in. Oh. Namaste. Namaste. Have a wonderful day. Thank you all for. Thank you.